So I did a couple of videos uh, earlier on how to do digital signal processing with the uh, Nucleo 144F7 board. Uh, this is the board uh, that, I, that I used earlier. Uh, and the PMOD uh, I2S board. Um, and I'll, I'll include a link below uh, if you haven't seen them. That sort of covers a lot of the sort of background material on this video. What I wanted to do in this video is basically show a radio that I've built which uses the Talo detector that I built earlier but replaces all the phase shifting that I've done in op amps with a DSP implementation. And on this radio, uh, what I've chosen to use uh, is this Pi board hardware here and I'll, I'll just show you that there. So the Pi board is uh, it's an ARM F4 processor and F4 uh, STM32 F405 processor. Um, it doesn't quite have the power of the F7, but as you can see, it's in uh, quite a quite a smaller form factor than the uh, than the F7. So it's kind of convenient from that perspective. Note in this build, I'm I'm not going to be using MicroPython. Uh, rather, I, I j I'll just be programming and flashing the uh, uh, the Pi board uh, using STM Cube IDE software. Like I said before, I won't be covering the DSP side of things in, in great detail uh, in this video, and, and I've got a link to the two videos I mentioned earlier below. What I thought I'd do is let's walk through the block diagram and the structure and the interconnections and show how, the, how this radio works. So as I mentioned earlier, the heart is the uh, Pi board, which is an STM32 F405. And that board runs at uh, a maximum clock speed of 164 megahertz. So it's a little bit less than the 216 megahertz that the F7 uh, works on. Um, the Pi board is uh, programmed in, normally it's programmed using um, uh, a defuse programming, which is a, a USB based uh, programming protocol. But in this case, because I want to use the STM Cube IDE, uh, well, let's, let me hold it up the right way. I'm using this ST-Link uh, 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 programmer right here. So this is an ST-Link V2. They're available for about nine bucks on, uh, on Amazon. Uh, so they're, they're quite cheap. So let's walk through the structure of the radio. So the microcontroller has the following peripherals. So the first is the LCD, which is used to display the uh, frequency to which the radio is tuned. The other I, uh, I2C peripheral is the SI5351, which you've seen quite a few times in my other videos. Uh, and both of those are programmed using the I2C protocol. And the, the pins that I'm using on the Pi board are pins X9 and X10, which are, which are the I2C pins. Uh, the STM pins are PB6 and PB7. Now note, with the, uh, the LCD actually runs at 5 volts, so you have to have a level shifter between uh, the I2C of the Pi board and the SI5351, which both run at 3 volts, and the LCD, which runs at 5 volts. So continuing, here's the TALO detector that uh, you've seen in my other videos. So that TALO detector takes a local oscillator signal at 0 and 90 degrees phase. Uh, it takes an RF signal, uh, you, a received RF signal, and it mixes those two together to produce an audio out at 0 and 90 degrees out of phase. That 0 and 90 degrees audio signal gets sent to the PMOD board. Now this PMOD board, and, uh, and again I highlighted this in the F7 video, uh, is controlled from the Pi board through the I2S protocol. So there are five lines of importance here. So there's data out from the board. So in other words, that is audio from PMOD board to the processor. So it's D1, D in on the processor. There is D in on the uh, PMOD, PMOD board, data in. There is the master clock, the word select, and the bit clock. And again, I've got all details on this in the previous video. But just going through the pins that I'm using on the, on the Pi board, that's X22 for data coming into the Pi board. X21 is data going out from the Pi board. And then Y1, Y5, and Y9 are the master clock 
the frame or the word select clock and the bit clock. So the processing goes as follows. So the audio out signal at zero and 90 degrees out of phase is fed into the left and right channels of line in. That then gets passed through to the processor through the data in pin. So again, this is still left and right channel separated. And then in the processor through digital signal processing, the left and the right channels have a plus 45 and a minus 45 phase off offset applied to them. They're added together, the result of which is the selected sideband. And I'll come to this a little bit later. Uh, this radio does include a sideband selector switch that you can choose between upper and lower sideband. And really that's achieved just by simply swapping the plus 45 and the minus 45 between the left and the right signals. Those two signals are then added together, they're summed together, and then passed through the data outline back into the data in of the PMOD I2S2. And then this signal here contains the audio signal with the unwanted sideband removed or suppressed. That signal then flows through a simple LM386 based amplifier with a volume pot and out through the speaker. So the other peripherals of notice are this encoder, which is used to control the frequency, and a single switch, which is used to swap between upper and lower sideband. So let's just have a quick look through the radio, and I'll point out the component parts on the, on the radio. Um, so here's the Pi board down the bottom here. This is obviously the LCD. Here's the two I2C lines coming out of the LCD through this level shifter, which uh, transforms the I2C signal between a 5 volt I2C signal based here and a 3.3 volt signal based out on the other side. This switch here is the, uh, single, uh, is the sideband select switch between upper and lower sidebands. Here's the PMOD board that you've, you've seen in the, uh, in the earlier video with a line uh, line out and line in. We've got the line in here coming from the TALO detector, which you've uh, which you'll recognise from the uh, from the earlier videos. Uh, this this board actually is getting a little bit beaten up at the moment, so I might have to refresh that. But this is basically where the um, the uh, uh, local oscillator signals flow into here and here. The RF signal flows into here. They are mixed together, and it produces this audio signal, which gets fed back into the uh, into the processor. So, just some other stuff that's on the board. Here's the uh, volume control pot and that LM386 based uh, amplifier. And then up here, this is just a simple 5 volt regulator. On the other side is a 3.3 volt regulator. Now, note here, I actually tried to. Um, this is an OLED. Uh, I'd actually tried to uh, use the OLED, but one of the things that unfortunately it did is uh, the OLED actually writing to the OLED was uh, very expensive and it actually got in the way of the uh, DSP processing loop. Okay, so let's uh, feed in an RF signal into the radio. Uh, what I've got here is uh, I'm emitting a uh, 7.202 megahertz signal at minus 60 dBm into the radio. So here's the RF signal here going out, back in through the, uh, the TALO detector, getting mixed with a local oscillator signal that's coming from the, uh, that's coming from the SI5351. And then finally an audio signal, which is the product of those two mixing together, which contains both the upper and the lower sideband signals is fed into the processor. So let's uh, tune around, uh, let's make sure you can see that. So I'm, uh, RF is 7.202, I'm currently tuned to 7.202, so I'll basically hear nothing, but as I tune up, you can see now there's that, a one kilohertz tone there. As I tune up further, now it's up to a two kilohertz tone. So you can see at the moment, uh, I'm receiving the lower sideband. Uh, but let's uh, change that. 
Let's go to the upper side band and then we'll tune down. And there we are, now we're receiving the upper side band. Now note, you can, you can actually hear the... You can actually va vaguely hear the... Let me turn the speaker up a bit. I don't know if you can quite hear that, but that is the suppressed side... The, the, the other suppressed side band. So that's the uh, DSP uh, phase shifting doing its work there of uh, suppressing the unwanted sideband. So we'll go and get this radio on the air, but just first I'll go through some other notes, other build notes that I've got here. Um, so the encoder code uh, is the code that I've used earlier in some of the Arduino projects. It's still a bit buggy, um, and I think you can see as I tune around you'll occasionally get it there, yeah, there it was just there, where it doesn't actually register um, that you've moved around. Um, and one of the things to note is that I did include some uh, uh, capacitors to ground, some 0.1 microfarad capacitors to ground on both the, uh, on both the encoder switches. So still a little buggy, but uh, those capac capacitors greatly improved it. Uh, one other thing to note, um, the CPU is about 50% busy, so that's just with the DSP. Uh, and, and I mentioned before I had troubles when I had an OLED in there because uh, it was basically taking too long to write to the OLED. So this is uh, right on the bounds of, uh, of being able to do this uh, with, the, um, uh, with the F4 board. Um, you don't have a lot of spare room, in, uh, spare processing room in there. Um, one of the other things to note, uh, if you have a look, I've included a, a link to the um, GitHub repo where I've got this, uh, all the code here. And this code actually uses a main.cpp, a C++ main. Uh, and unfortunately that's not updated by CubeMX when, on any chain. So say you change a peripheral later GPIO. So you have to keep uh, manually shuffling the, the code changes between the generated main.c and the main.cpp. Uh, the reason why I, I wanted to do a C++ version of main is because it makes the integration with uh, libraries, which are all C++, uh, a lot easier. Uh, one of the other things that, one of the differences uh, is the F4 boards support a full duplex mode for I2S. Um, so you don't have to set up separate transmit and receive I2S endpoints like the F7. So there's quite a bit less wiring uh, that goes on there. Um, the SSB change itself simply swaps the left and the right. Uh, let me just pan up to that so you can see there. So the SSB simply swaps the left and the right FIR coefficients around. So a very simple, uh, a very simple way of, uh, of swapping sidebands. Uh, just some other quick notes. Uh, a 7805 powers all the 5 volt rail and it does run pretty hot um, so it's at the edge of its tolerance so i'm just touching it now and it is uh, it is quite hot the radio itself can hear down to about minus 90 dbm uh, so not quite as sensitive uh, as uh, let's say the qcx which that can go all the way down you can still hear a signal at minus 110 dbm uh, but not bad nonetheless and and you'll hear that when i you know when i when i hook up an antenna to it so I think I've pretty much covered all the sort of the um, uh, all the sort of theory and uh, practice of this. So let's get this radio on the air and see if we can hear something. CQ forty meters, CQ forty meters from November, India, five Yankees standing by. Turn her out there at the back. 
nice the antenna as well, an LDG uh, remote. Well, you can hear there's, uh, there's some activity on 40 meters this evening. Um, I'm actually not uh, quite happy with, uh, with how this turned out. Um, I do have some problems, it looks, with this. Uh, let me just turn the sound up so you can hear it for yourself. Looks like I've got some loose connections somewhere on this board here. So uh, what I might do, and also I'm, I'm not getting uh, as good a... Um, sideband suppression, wrong sideband suppression as I thought I would. So uh, what I might do is uh, I'll wrap this video but I'll probably spin another version of these boards um, so that I can um, you know basically uh, see if I can correct the uh, the problems there. So anyway uh, that's a wrap for this video.